Через тайн. Which allows Woken to Woke Swamp and part 15 of the Leaf Array Roadster. Firstly this week I'd like to say massive thanks to everyone who supported the channel last week either by going to the tip jar or buying one of my lovely Oak Swamp t-shirts. Funnily enough one of our t-shirts turned up at the old Paracow store in New Zealand. Gav puts on dirt drags down at his place and the dude showed up in an Oak Swamp shirt and then tore up the dirt with his Model T. So Gav's down there building 30s to 60s motors, American stuff, British stuff, all sorts. He's got a great channel there and all the music like here is live. So if you haven't been there, pop over to the old Paracow store after. Anyway, back to business. So my plan for the leaf this week was to get all the bodywork welded up, get all the repairs done. But as the old weather's a bit moody, what I'm gonna do instead start work on the engine there's a few jobs that need doing before it actually goes on the road so I'm going to get them up together and to be honest I want to get it running again so I can start shaking them down a bit so it's ready to hit the road when it's ready to hit the road if you know what I mean well, I've made a bit of a list so I've got to do the hoses for the radiator I've got to put a temperature sender on which I want to do as a capillary I've got to do the cam belt oil filter and put an oil gauge in it, wire it, there's a little job to do on the mounts, the engine mounts, put the coil on, the front pulley ready for a crank handle and the gearbox oil. This engine is good and I want it to stay good and I think by doing this area here is really going to help. And once it's up and running I can check out how that radiator is working as well because I don't know how it's going to behave so the temperature sender is essential and obviously the oil pressure gauge. So let's go and have a look. My first job is right here and it's something I can take off and take in the garage and do in there so now I've got to make him go to there so a bit of straight pipe or something. I think what I'm going to do is take that off first have a butcher's at it and see what we got. And getting out. It's got an O ring in there, that's why it was stiff coming out, I'm assuming. What I'm considering doing with this is chopping it off here and then just remaking it from there. Now, I'm assuming these two are heater in and out, so I'm going to have to incorporate them as well somehow. But I think what I'm going to do is give it a bit of a clean up so I can see what I'm doing. Looks like solder was not heating up. Interesting. This is the way it, it goes originally. So I'm thinking if I turn it out the other way, it's, it's immediately coming down straight away. This pipe here is a bit exhausty really, but... Mm. <laughs> I don't know exactly what I'm doing with this yet, but I'm just trying to make it smaller so I can start getting an idea. I'm going to have to do something that goes around the corner like that. Got this bit of tube, it's, it's heavy, but same OD. And it's got a couple of elbows on it, so I might be able to do something like that with a bit of jiggery pokery, maybe. It's going to look ugly. I'm not sure what's happening here. This looks like TIG, I think, now. I don't know what it is, Okay, well there you go, that's somewhere near there. I don't mind that being a bit cappy. The beauty is it's nice and thick, so welding to it shouldn't be a problem. So I'm gonna mark that up and weld it up. the idea. 
But I've just noticed something. This is obviously not central, and this hole doesn't line up now. You wouldn't have thought of that, would you? Looking at that, that just looks symmetrical, but if you look really closely, it just goes off at a slight. What I'm going to do, I'm going to clean this up a bit, and this piece here, I'll just weld another piece on. So look, that's kind of what I'm going to do, put that, there's a 3mm seg, what I cut out of the rat, I'm going to weld him into there, I'm going to cut a bit of this out first. I don't know if you lads get the shop Aldi near you, but I go there with my missus occasionally and you get little surprises like this. This was probably about it's probably about six or seven quid, but it's just handy. Just handy when you need an O-ring. Even handier when it fits as well. Yeah, I'm just gonna mark this onto there, weld it from underneath, make this look like that end a bit more. Distance. Surprising how long a little thing like that takes, really. Let's see if it fit. Chris is it? <laughs> what do you aim at that, Miss? That's perfect, isn't it? What? What I did, I had to reverse this round the other way. But these bolts were out, so I just had to weld another piece on the bottom. <laughs> right. Because it didn't fit back. That's good. That's the first job out of the way. Nice one. On the hosies. All right, so that's all right. Isn't it? Now I'm considering running a bead of weld right around the edge of this, and then just smoothing it off just to give it that sort of that sort of lip. It's just getting it to be nice and even. I'm not going to worry about it just for the minute. If you don't know about this engine, what this is. It's an Isuzu 4ZB1, which is an 1800 petrol engine they produced in the 80s. It bangs out about 75 horsepower, which is plenty enough for this. This particular one came out of a Hindustani Ambassador, which is an Indian car they produced for years and years, which originally had the Leyland B series engine in, but then they swapped over to this one. In Australia, I think it was in quite a lot of stuff. There was. Isuzu Fargo, I think, and there's a lot of cars it was in as well, but apparently it's a pretty good, solid, reliable engine. It cost me 130 quid with a gearbox. What am I going to do? It started straight away. I'm going with it on this journey of reliability. I've still to get the die grinder out, but I've called it Susie. Right, the next hose is going to go from there to there, which again is pretty damn simple. So I'm just going to order some hose for those, get a meter or something of that flexi hose. Regard to the heater, there's an outlet here on the inlet manifold, so I think what I'm going to do is run the heater between this and this small one down here. The hot water will come out, go that way, then go back in here. I don't know what it would have done originally. Hmm, I'm thinking with this piece I've cut off, take that down like this, I can take the hose there through the chassis up to the heater there. I'm going to whip that off so I'll get that nice and flush. Weld them on. rolls around the chassis and it'll go inside the bulkhead to hit the heater. What I'm going to do just in here shortly is uh, put a valve in it so it can be switched on and off. Right Rattler's calendar, time to change from Miss February, unless I've looked what Miss March was doing. Oh hello, 
Now that looks like a Model A or something. Nice blue hair. Hello, Miss March. Okay, cam belt time. I did a bit of research online and there's nothing major you got to know about this. So I'm going to renew these marks that are already on them. You can see it's this gold copper grease in there. It's been off. It's been off before. So the original timing marks are here. You can see them and they've got one down here. There's not one on here for some reason, but I'll put one on there. And I assume I just whip him off, put the new one on, and Bob's your Charlie. Unfortunately, felt it's the wrong size, but I'll just order another one of those up. I'll have a better check, see if I've got the right one after all this. £16.65 for Campbell. I don't know who they are. Looks about right, doesn't it? Straightforward to get out, they've left a thing on there and you just... He's leaning forward on that nut they've got you. Unfortunately, that idler's good, because I couldn't find one. Those lines are lined up, that one's lined up, and that one's lined up. So if I turn this and it goes bang. What I am going to be doing on here as well, and I might do it sooner than later, but I'm going to be putting a cranking hand on here. It just gives you the last resort, you know, about this reliability thing here. It means if you've got a bit of a flat battery, as long as it's well in tune, wallop, off she goes. So I could have room to get the oil filter off on that with the engine just slightly that way. And look, you can see it with this front hole. So I'm going to put a new hole in there. And then what I'm thinking about doing is having this sprung. So this sits here all the time. And when you want to start it, you push it in, roll it over once. And as soon as it fires, it drops out. See who that is? Bullshit. Mm. And then it'll always be on there. I had one on an A60 pickup once. And I used it for ages, my start mode went, and I just used it all the time. Okay, so while the oil's out, I'm going to whip this oil pressure sender out, because I want to put a capillary one in there. I can start working out what fittings I've got to use. I'm assuming everything on this will be metric, being Japanese. Well, that's cool. These, even though they're Japanese, are the same as the British stuff, so that goes straight on, so I can take my oil clock, put a straight in the middle there and then just put the oil clock coming on. So I've ordered a, a brass one of these and that just winds straight onto there and goes straight up to the oil pressure gauge. Taking off any of the, any fittings like this that aren't going to be used that I can block up because I don't need no vacuum. I don't think I'm going to be using the servo on this car. I've just whipped the end off and I'm just going to weld it up and that'll seal that for good. So that's the bolt now. So what I'm going to do is just lock tight this in there and then I can forget about it. Okay, just to make sure I haven't done anything silly, I'm going to whip all the plugs out and then roll it over. As I've got all this open right now, I think I'm going to have a look into making this crank handle. I know it's stupid, but I really, really want it. It's just part of the tech list for this car. So what I'm going to do, because I was going to go on to the throttle pedal, because I've got to do that as well, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can find the bits for this, sort of work something out, how I can make it work. So I've got to look through this box, see if I can find the bits and bobs. You see this? 
I do consider this as the front lens and I would have probably used it because I think <laughs> that looks super cool put a mesh on it but the problem is I could only find this this hand I wonder if they ever did another one I can find another one of those which I think they look better going down don't they it's a cool idea though isn't it Frog. I'll try and get him working for it. You know I keep everything there. Right. So this is the sort of idea you see. As soon as it fires it up, it pushes out. So I've I've taken the original bolt out and I'm gonna try this one. <laughs> Fat chance. This is off an Austin or something. Laughing, yeah. Well, that's ridiculous. I can't believe that's just fitted on there. What I'm thinking is now, every time you're trying to pull it, you're putting a lot, a lot of pressure on this, and this will only need to be talked to a certain amount. So, what I think I'm going to do is take this and talk it up to the right amount. I think what I need to do is make some cheeks that come off of here that come down and slot into this pulley because this has got threads in for the puller that does fit surprise me didn't think that would but I think it needs a different end on it I think we'll have a bash at just getting the getting the first of it in there because I've just been having a look in the garage and having a little fiddle around with some bits and pieces and I I think I I think I got it I think I know what to do. Yeah. This bit of red tubes come back into action. It's just right for this. So that's my starting point. Here at Oak Swamp, I think it's time for a bit of Chuckberry. Chuckberry. <laughs> <laughs> piece of what was off a tractor you know like a garden tractor and it already had a hole in it so I cut it off and trimmed it to fit and then I've just welded it to the top of this there we got this washer it's tight on there I'm hoping gotta find a big spring so all right hoses are ordered temp sender I need to buy one. I need to find a, a capillary. Cam belt's done, oil and filter on the way. Front pulley is getting there, that's banging. It's getting a bit late now, but I'm gonna have to just make some covers for these, just get that covered in. That look way better. Then I gotta drill some holes down there, just to finish it off. <laughs> Sun's out. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here, so I'm going to fill this space in, so I'm just going to work out a way of making it look as though it's supposed to be there. 
what I think I'm gonna do is come down at that angle so it's following this down. But yeah, 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 yeah. Right, that fits both sides, so that's quite handy. So I'm gonna cut two of these out. Not sure about putting a hole in that or what to do. I want something in there. I'm not sure quite what it is yet. Running short on three mil, so I'm gonna do it in two mil. I think it'd be all right anyway. The, the integrity's in the box of the chassis and this is just filling the hole up really. And I'm gonna put one either side so it'll be plenty strong. I think using this sort of shape gives it a sort of bit art deco-y sort of look as well at the front there. With the holes, it might look quite cool. Thing is with this two mil, it's gonna be a lot easier to drill a hole in it. And a lot quicker to cut out. And I think I've got one grinding disc left. We've got two left. Someone asked me in the comments, how many of these do I get through? And it's not really that many, to be honest. Um, I think if I was using a plasma car, all the tips or sundries for that, it would be, it don't weigh this, I'd buy 50 of these for about 16 quid, you know what I mean? And yeah, they're not the best and they don't last the longest, but for 16 quid. I replied to a message to someone who said they, uh, they started using their grinder more. I think it's really important to get to know your tools, you know? Like, I know a grinder's just simple, but once you get to know it, it's, it, you can use it for everything, you know. And I said to the guy, I built the rat with a cordless, a grinder, and a welder. And of course, the leather hammers. And being keen helps. Being keen is the one. Picture in your mind what you want, and then don't stop until you get to that point. This is what I'm doing. I'm learning along the way. I'm making all of this up as I go along. But if I can do it, you can do it. You know what I mean? Take the money up, turn the TV down. The former was a panic about it, do insane. Trying to get the workers out the way of the train. Engine in will blow, it's a long, a long. Can't stop the train, gotta let it roll off. So I get a bit warm that drill. I think some animals been living in there. By the look of it, it's starting to rain. Scatter about, we got an arms, get the train coming two miles out. Okay, so now it's time to do this throttle pedal. I want this bit of five mil bar, but I don't want the bend in it. So it's time for sledging all, I think. idea of that because it's got kind of a nice pattern on it and it's a nice thin bit of strong steel for the throttle pedal i've come across these odd bits nice bit of bracket that's curling out like that and a little bit of tube well, 
Right, so I cut those bits off, drilled a hole to give you this sort of affair. Let it go on the steering column. Make someone happy, make someone smile. All get together, let it work while let's stick together. I'm going to weld these two bits of pliers together. So what I'm going to do is split this to take cable. Okay, so this is where I've got to. It's all tamped up at the moment. That will run straight through the bulkhead. The reason I made this other piece of metal up here, if for any reason this is horrible, you, you're falling over yourself, what I'm going to do is move this to here and then it would just be in the same sort of place. I had Greg over in the week and he got in the car and he said, oh, I'd never be able to get my feet in there. And I thought about it and I thought, well, I'm not building it for Greg. So I'm going with it being in the middle with the Greg option over it. But that is as far as I'm gonna get this week, I'm afraid, because I completely run out of time and I've got to get on with editing. But I really hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, please leave me a like and a comment. If you're not subscribed at this point, make sure you hit the old subscribe button. If you want to help me out and support the channel, please go over to the tip jar, or better still, go over to my shop and buy one of these lovely Oaks Farm t-shirts. Anyway, thanks to Jim for all the cool tunes. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you dudes next time. Thanks.